Greetings, YouTube. The other day on one of the forums, I saw somebody post a uh, a thread, and it was about the high point high point of D and D. And I think that the original poster was looking for something of an objective opinion. Now, I guess you could look at sales data, which I don't have access to. I, I didn't do any research. This is because I'm not actually talking about an objective high point of D&D. Um, and I guess if you did that, that could lead you to some kind of, you know, solid foundation, objective view. But I don't necessarily think of sales data, which is really the only, you know, hard piece of information we're going to be able to drum up. Um, as the best definition of the high point of a game. You could use that for a high point of a car, but you could also look at how many of those cars have accrued value over time as vintage or antiques. You could do hard data on knives, but how many people on forums talk about those knives? Now, today, after they're no longer available, and that particular knife is still available, but you get the point. Because a game is different than a thing, and as I've just pointed out, even things can have objective uh, and subjective aspects to them. I mean, like, I mean, this is a thing, it's a gaming thing, it's a big die, it's a big red die. I just thought it was, you know, nice and chunky. Um, and, and it was made in China. What a shock. But uh, people still collect these things. I own some vintage dice in my collection. I don't think I own any, any antiques. And once something becomes collectible, it ceases to be objective. It becomes subjective that people are collecting it for potentially ephemeral reasons. And even if two things are the same age from the same manufacturer, there's going to be differences. They look at the collecting uh, categories in comic books, and you know, mint, near mint, things like that. Um, but when it comes to games, they're, in my opinion, completely subjective. You can't say high point and then really talk about the essence of what the game is. Because a game isn't just a thing. It may be books, it may be dice. I got an entire shelf of box sets over there, um, which came with, you know, soft cover books and dice in them, sometimes little chits and things. And, um, and those things are sparks. A game is a spark. And just like a spark, it's ephemeral. It's hard to pin down. It has a moment, because that idea comes, and then you implement that idea in a game with other people. Now, what you end up experiencing is something that you can't be objective about. Even if a group of people says, yeah, you know, I remember that March 24th, 1998 game we played? That was the best game ever. And even if everybody at the game thinks it was the best game ever. And I just pulled that number, that date out of my head. There's a list of things in the background on my computer at the moment. One of them is March 24th. But um, that's not still objective. That's still subjective. Though... Somebody did something right to get that game to be that good. So when you say objective or subjective high point of D&D, I'm going to go with purely subjective. Because other than game sales, book sales, or box set sales or something, you are not going to be able to really pin something down. And for me, the high point of official D&D was 3.5. Because that is the game that came closest to what that moving point in my head is of what is the best 
rendition of D and D I've ever seen. Um, but if we're going to go out of the official canon, which is out of the realm of the companies that the company that produced the game from you know the earliest eras up to the present, uh, I'm going to go with Pathfinder because that is the closest I've seen. Now it's it is you know the best and worst. It's it's got everything I want in it, but it's got so much that I think is extraneous. But the problem is, what I think is extraneous to Pathfinder is going to be different to someone else, what they think is extraneous to Pathfinder. And we're probably very likely never going to agree on that one. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that I still think that between those two versions, 3.5 and Pathfinder, there is my version of the perfect high point of D&D. And 3.5 and Pathfinder are intercompatible, so you get quite a bit of overlap. For example, um, the extra ring feat is not in Pathfinder, but I think it would be completely appropriate to lift it from 3.5 and to dump it into Pathfinder. Um, it makes perfect sense, it, and it's not overpowered in my book. Um, but that's just an example, that kind of thing. You could lift one thing from there or the other way around, and I think you could do it without too much difficulty. Um, also, I, I haven't done a proper review yet, um, but Starfinder is a, an excellent rendition of Pathfinder, moving it into the space fantasy as opposed to just fantasy fantasy. Um, and I think they did a good job with that. So I think that that moves it really into the realm of what was the Dragon Star setting, and I think that did a good job. So, the flexibility there in in, in 3.5 Pathfinder, Starfinder, Sphere, to my mind, is what makes it the high point. And in, in addition, we have the, the OGL, the Open Gaming License, which I still consider it to be the greatest gift that we have ever received from uh, anyone into the gaming community. So, I apologize for my voice, it's a little rough today. Um, so let's discuss high points. Now this is a subjective zone we're talking about here. No one is right, no one is wrong. You are free to express your opinion and defend it or not defend it, because you notice I haven't defended my opinion here, it's purely subjective. I think that, that the 3.5, the Starfinder kind of sphere, all of it linked to the OGL, is to my mind, the high point of the game. Um, and I can't be wrong. <laughs> it's just my opinion. Uh, but it's one I've developed over time, and I'm quite confident that uh, this opinion for me will hold for quite some time to, in, in, in the future. So, let's discuss the high point of D&D. Because I think that that's a rich mine for us to go play in. So let's dig around, see what we can find.